for now, um, let's kick off this focus group discussion on good agriculture practices on vegetable oil. To start, for the first speakers is from Malaysia. He is of one from the college Pelkra. Uh, his name, uh, Mr. Azli Zul bin Abdul Rahim. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Azli Zul. So he will present about oil palm cultivation in Malaysia, about main production areas, farming system, like seed, sowing or seedling, and also about fertilizer, pest and disease management, and also about processing primary and secondary. So you will present your uh, present uh, presentation material by yourself. Yes. Yeah. So you have 15 minutes for present and also have 20 minutes for discussion. So for all uh, participants, if you have any question or any concern, please write into the chat box in this Zoom. So I will asking to the speaker during this discussion session. Yeah. Please, Mr. Azlizul, times is yours. And my name is Azli bin Abdul Rahim from College uh, Faircraft College, uh, Malaysia. Today, I'm going to sharing about oil palm cultivation in in Malaysia. Okay, next, and this is my discussion topic. Next, all right. For introduction, we can go to the next slide. All right. Currently, this is a global palm oil supplier in in the world, which is as you can see here, Indonesia supply about sixty percent of the world palm oil. While Malaysia is only 30%, and others 10% is from Thailand, Colombia, and also Nigeria. There is so many issues related to palm oil product, actually, as uh, all we can uh, all we know recently, uh, there is a lot of issue regarding to uh, palm oil product. However, one of the Malaysian government effort to overcome this uh, issue is by first the first of all is limiting the plant area. And Malaysia has set the maximum area of oil palm plantation is about 6.5 million hectares by 2023. And also for now, as they're limiting the, uh, the planting area, they are encouraging all the planters, uh, oil palm uh, plantation or smallholder in Malaysia to increase the replanting activity, effort to improve the yield and quality of palm oil through research of, for production, of new varieties and also fertilizer and the use of modern facilities. Next, and this one shows Malaysia palm oil major export destination. Uh, the biggest one is uh, from India and the second Malaysia export our oil product to China uh, followed by EU, Turkey, Kenya, Philippines and also Pakistan. Uh, this is the seven major market combined which is accounted for 8.9 million tons of uh, Malaysia palm oil export just for uh, 2022. Next, this one is just for information, which is a company or the agency that currently I'm working on, which is Fell Carbon Height. We are the one of the company or agency that responsible in oil palm industry. Next, our main objective of our agency is to consolidate the land and also rehabilitating the land. We use the land and improve or we are using the land or we develop the land using the uh, systematic crop or any crop that can uh, generate income for our participants. Next, uh, this is main business of our agency. It is 85, 80, 83% of our business is related to our palm planting area. And next, and um, as you can see here, our agency only hold 3% from the total area of oil palm plantation in Malaysia. And next, we go to the, the main objective of our discussion today, which is the main production area in Malaysia. As you can see here, we have about 5.9 million hectares. Uh, this data is 2022, which is Sarawak is the biggest planting area in Malaysia, followed by Sabah. And also, we have other states in Peninsula Malaysia, just like Johor, Paha, Pera, and others. And also, Malaysia is the second largest palm oil global exporter after Indonesia, which is uh, total area is 5.9 million hectares of planting area. Next, 
And this one is just uh, an overview for Malaysian oil palm industry in 2022, which is, as you can see here, our planted area has decreased about a little bit uh, from 2021 to 2022. This is because our government tried to, to limit uh, our planting area. But through our research and development, as you can see here from 2021 to 2032, our CPO has increased uh, from uh, about uh, ve uh, very little percentage and export also increased and this also increased our export revenue from 2021 to 2022. Next, however, you can see here our planted area uh, of oil palm uh, decreased from 2019 to 2022. And start from now, uh, our government uh, just limit uh, the planting area in Malaysia and focus on uh, the technology and uh, which is uh, they can increase the yield uh, but not increase the planting area. Next. All right. So what is uh, what we do in Malaysia in terms of good, good agriculture practice in Malaysia uh, or palm cultivation? Actually, our Malaysia uh, good agriculture practice in oil palm industry enforced by MSPO, which is Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil. Um, the authority that uh, oversees or uh, responsible for this uh, MSPO, uh, we have MPOB, which is Malaysia Palm Oil Board, and also MPOCC, Malaysia Palm Oil Certification. Council. These two agencies will oversee and uh, control all the uh, certification and uh, rules on uh, how they conduct open industry in Malaysia. And next, we go to the farming system. We're going to talk about seed sowing, seedling planting, and so on. For seed production, plant material is a very important factor in determining the, the, the oil palm yield. Planting quality, uh, seedling, and practicing good management and good agronomic practice will produce palm tree that can produce high fresh fruit bunch yield. And the selection of quality plant material is very critical in the oil palm industry, which has an economic lifespan of around 25 years. So grower will suffer losses due to the low yield throughout the life of their plant if they take lightly. Uh, the quality factor in the production and selection of all palm plant materials. Next, in Malaysia, we are currently uh, using the variety commonly planted in Malaysia is Tanera, uh, which is the hybrid between Dura and Pesifera. Tanera is chosen because it's given a good ratio of palm oil and palm kernel oil yield. Next. Um, and this one, uh, shall we the cross between Pesifera and Dura, which is Pesifera is actually uh, palm that have kernel with no shell. Meanwhile, the Dura palm have kernel with a uh, thick shell. So the cross between these two varieties, uh, Dura and Pesifera, or we call it as a D by D, known as a Tenera palm. So Tenera has thin shell kernel. Uh, the pollen from Pesifera, which is the male flower of Pesifera, used to pollinate with the female flower of Dura in order to produce um, Tenera. And then uh, Tenera palm produce fruit that uh, have large kernel with a lot of pulp and also thin uh, shell. And Tenera is both hybrid and F1 generation or first filler generation. As you can see there uh, in the slide, they have a composition between Dura and Tenera. Um, I just want to highlight that um, uh, they have a higher uh, mesocarp to fruit. The, the area of mesocarp is very large uh, uh, in Tenera uh, when, we, when we compare with uh, Dura, which is Tenera have 80% of mesocarp and Dura have 60% of mesocarp. So uh, the oil content is higher in Tenera. Next. Uh, this one, the, using the best variety of seed is the first step in good agriculture practice in, in oil palm. We have to choose the best uh, planting material so we can have a better yield uh, throughout 25 years. Uh, in Malaysia, it is absolutely forbidden to use seedling collected in the field as plant material uh, because of the source of the seedling is the result uh, of cross between the nera 
parity and also Tenera variety, so T by T. And then this cross will produce about 25% of Dura, 25% of Pesipera, and 50% Tenera. So we don't have uh, control in this uh, how much Tenera they produce in field. So it is forbidden in Malaysia to collect uh, seedling uh, directly from the field because of these uh, factors. Therefore, open seedling that grow in wild in the field cannot be used as a planting material because they may be dura, they may be pesifera with a low yield. Next. So, as from uh, January 2013, there is 25 license of open seed producer in Malaysia. So, production of quality open seedling is determined by two main factors. The first factor is the use of D by P selected seed optim from producer licensed with MPOB. So if the uh, farmers want to buy uh, planting material for their field, they have to go and find uh, the licensed producer certified by MPOB, then they can buy the, the seed link. If not, they will be uh, penalized for that. Usually the yield potential is high. That's why Panera is used because of the yield potential is very high. And according to the Malaysian standard, MS157, issued by Malaysian Standard Department, determining the parent selection reproduction of D by P seed. This is to ensure that the seed production producing agency in Malaysia produce quality plant material. All the uh, seed producing agency in Malaysia, all the nursery in Malaysia that produce or pound seedling, they have to follow Malaysian standard. And the latest standard was released by, uh, in 2005, which is known as MS-157. All the farmers and smallholders need to get seedling from the nursery that use plant material sourced from legitimate seed producer only. And that is, uh, they are not encouraged to buy from questionable source, even though the price offered is cheaper than the market price. And seedling that grow under tree also cannot be used as planting material again. And if it's done, there is a probability that the resulting plant material consists of mixture dura, tenera, and pesifera because we don't have control on that. Thus, will yield uh, FFB or fresh fruit bunch to all to the bunch that is low in overall. This happened because the seed under the tree may have resulted from hybrid between tenera at three and another tenera three. So the plantation operator is question in question. They will suffer losses throughout the economic life of the oil palm plant, which is approximately about 35 years. As we talk about uh, nursery, and also every, just like I said in the earlier, in, uh, earlier all the Malaysian oil palm industry is uh, monitored by NPOB, so they uh, already introduced or established what we call it as a code of uh, practice. And first of all, the productivity of an uh, oil pump depends on so many factors. And the most important, fact, important factors is quantity of farm seedling that very much depending on good nursery management and practices. First of all, is very, very important is the, the planting material itself, the seedling itself. So they must come from the really reliable uh, nursery, certified nursery. So we can ensure the quality of the seedling is so MPOB just uh, established code of practice. They develop uh, a guideline to nursery operator for producing high quality of open seedling from planting of the D by P or Tenera. Anti-germinated seed to raising the seedling until the stage of uh, which they, can, uh, they are ready to fill planting. Next. All right. So this is the code of uh, practice for good nursery in open nursery. So, so this is the requirement uh, according to the standard. First is uh, traceability. The all pound seedling produce shall be traceable to a registered or licensed seed producer. So the farmers, they have, they, if they want to buy the seedling, they have to go and find all the license uh, necessary uh, to purchase their seedling. And requirement also, they also offer for the nursery, they have to comply to the MPOB Act. They have to adhere to the Malaysian Palm Oil Board Act 1998 and its subsidiaries. Next requirement is germinated seed, where the supplied by licensed oil palm seed producer authorized by MPOB in good condition and free from any disease, defect, 
and damaged seed should be removed. Uh, plant as soon as possible after delivery. This is very important for the seed producer because uh, in Malaysia, uh, we have a very uh, serious uh, problem of uh, Ganoderma disease or Basel stem rot. So all the seed producer, they have to take very uh, strict procedure to produce very high quality uh, germinated seed. Next, this one, the next requirement is um, nursery site selection. First, nursery site selection must be not prone to flooding or waterlogging area, open area or clear from shade. The next is level or gentle slope. Uh, they must be flat uh, and also near to the water source, any water source, and near to the source of good soil for polypack filling and accessible by motorized vehicle. And the next requirement for nursery, for good uh, nursery practice is site preparation. They have to clean and clear all the area before any activity can be done. Plow and harrow, remove root and plant debris. Uh, and also they must ensure that the site uh, of nursery edic uh, have adequate training system and sufficient access to road and working path and protected by fencing. Next. The next requirement, according to MPOB good nursery practices, is growing medium. So they have to choose the good growing medium for their uh, germinated seed or seedling of oil palm. First of all, they have uh, the, the growing medium, the choose by nursery must have good water holding capacity and aeration. High quality topsoil suitable uh, for soil mixture. Of course, free from debris, stone, stick, root, and also large clot, and free from any disease that will affect the growth of the open seedling. And they also have to develop a good, very good irrigation system in their nursery. So they must use the clean water, which is pH about four, and capable of supplying sufficient water, settling pond filtration equipment, water pump and appropriate watering system and also they must do the test run of irrigation system prior to transplanting this to avoid any seedling uh, that uh, wilting during after transplanting because after um, they move from uh, pre-nursery to main nursery water is very crucial part of the nursery next Tax requirement for good nursery practice is um, storage and safety uh, because all the chemical, all the uh, tools and equipment, they have, must store in the storage and keep uh, safe from uh, any injuries or uh, chemical exposure. And they must follow uh, the, the standard stated by MPOB and uh, good agriculture practices. Next, uh, the next uh, requirement for um, good nursery practices in nursery, they have nursery management and practices. So uh, in Malaysia, we have uh, two, ty uh, two types of nursery, which is pre-nursery and also mid-nursery, which is uh, pre-nursery with seedling age below four months. And after four months, they have to transfer into mid-nursery uh, until uh, they reach uh, certain uh, age, which is about 12 to 14 months before they can transplant into field. And then um, this uh, nursery also must uh, do the pest and disease control. And before, before they uh, move from pre-nursery to main nursery, they have to do culling. Culling is mean they have to remove all the abnormal or the uh, infected uh, seedling before they can uh, transplant into the main nursery. So they have uh, seedling below four months. Uh, all the abnormal uh, seedling, just like a twisted shoot, or we call it as a grass shoot, narrow leaf, roll leaf, eh, colante, crinkle leaf, or chimera, uh, should be cut because uh, we are afraid. Uh, this uh, type of seedling will not, pro uh, will not produce high quality of fresh fruit plants in the future. And after that, before they, they transfer from the main nursery into 
fail after 12 months or 40 months, um, they have to do another culling session or uh, they have to remove all the abnormal seedling, uh, just like a uh, run seedling, stunted seedling, okay, or erect or upright rigid seedling, flat top, okay, and juvenile seedling, which is the age of the seedling is uh, like uh, maybe like 10 to 12 months, but the form is uh, still juvenile. And also that is abnormal. And also they have to remove uh, the short internode, wide internode, narrow pinny, acute pinny insertion, short broad pinny, and other abnormalities of uh, or seedling. They have to cull or remove all the abnormality before uh, they uh, transplant from the main nursery to uh, field. And all these abnormal seedling must be destroyed cannot uh, they cannot plant uh, somewhere else they must be dis destroyed using any any tool such as uh, uh, parang or machete and next the last requirement in uh, good uh, nursery practice um, established by MPOB is they have to follow legal requirement all farm nursery activity and products shall in all aspect comply with the requirement of the legislation currently passed in Malaysia this code of practice emphasizes the practice and procedure for operating an oil palm nursery. All palm nursery operators should be familiar with all the relevant applicable recommendations given in this code and should practice them in daily basis in addition to their current routine without compromising the quality of the seedling prepared for the feed planting. This is because uh, this stage seedling is very important for the next 25 years uh, yield. Next. After we're done with seedling, after we have uh, our planting material, we can transplant uh, the seedling to, into field. Okay, next, uh, what is the requirement in a uh, new planting area? Which is, uh, first, first of all, all the farmers, the requirement of the field planting, all the farmers must have new planting plan. They have new planting plan. They have uh, they required to to plan all the planting activity throughout the year, because uh, all the operation is very crucial. Because it's uh, work as an initial step to determine the feasibility of the area concerning being a palm cultivation area. It is required to be seen from the point of view of need for compliance with local legislation. This is to ensure the applicable uh, regulation are complied with. And uh, for the new planting plan, also uh, they they also need to do uh, environmental impact assessment, and so they have to do uh, environmental impact assessment so they do not jeopardize all the natural uh, fauna, uh, flora and fauna around the planting area, and they have to do also development uh, area study. They have to study the topography, the climate, the uh, uh, facilities, all the water body, natural water body around the area before they can plant the oil pump uh, at the area. And they have to study the surrounding. Also, they have to develop a uh, fix or uh, we call it SEDU for the plant program. Next, uh, this one for land preparation, they have to do land clearing. Uh, after they clear the land, they have to lining, pruning, and clear all the uh, and develop the harvesting path. And all the debris from the forest or bush before the, the after the land clearing, they have to do waste management. And according to MPOB in Malaysia right now, uh, we implement zero burning policy. So after the land cleaning, farmers cannot do open burning. So if they, they do that, they, they're going to be penalized for that because um, uh, Malaysia adopt or implement a zero burning policy. So they cannot uh, burn all the debris uh, open. But if uh, on certain certain case, maybe like uh, the area already have a history on disease and the only way to control the disease through burning. So they have to report to the local authority uh, uh, asking for permission 
and they have to do the open burning in the control area. Next, uh, this one is uh, for uh, debris collection. And uh, in Malaysia, we, we plant our oil pump in a triangle system. Next, uh, we have uh, waste management. Next slide. So as I, I said before, uh, in Malaysia, we implement zero burning uh, policy. So we are not allowed to do open burning. So this is what we do right now. We, uh, if we want to replanting the oil pump, we have to scrapping cheap and let the oil pump uh, stem decompose in the field. So the compost uh, oil pump will uh, release back the nutrient form uh, into the soil. And next, and next is uh, uh, we do lining after uh, the land preparation is done. We do lining so we can have a very uniform space uh, for each our oil pump tree. And if we have to do the terrace, uh, terrace construction and after we already uh, done with the lining and terrace, we can, uh, we can proceed with the oil pump planting. And after open planting, it is uh, advisable for, uh, for all the farmers, open farmers in Malaysia to plant a uh, legume cover crop or um, LCC. Next. So uh, this is uh, the suggestion uh, uh, for all palm tree lining according to fertility uh, soil type. So if we have a high fertility soil, as you can see here, the distance between farm is quite uh, far. And if you have a marginal or problematic soil, so the distance between farm is uh, uh, near to each other. Next. And this is terrace construction. Uh, uh, this is the uh, SOP or um, uh, guideline developed by MPOB to all the all farm, uh, farmers in Malaysia. And next, uh, uh, next. Okay, this one is uh, all palm planting uh, technique. So uh, they show how, how, we, how we do, how we planting from a nursery, uh, how we transplant uh, the, the seedling from nursery into the field. Next. And next, I want to show you this is uh, the legume cover crop uh, planting. Uh, we have a uh, fourth uh, uh, popular uh, legume cover crop. However, the most popular one is Mukuna Brachiata because they have the ability to control rhinoceros beetle, one, uh, one of the important pests in uh, Malaysia oil pump. Uh, next, we go to the fertilizer, or uh, we can jump into uh, slide number 51. Uh, organizer, please. Right, uh, we jump to harvesting. Okay, so this is very important part of the oil pump industry in Malaysia. So we talk about uh, the right bunch standard. Uh, set by MPOB. Uh, you can go to uh, slide 52. Okay, so this is uh, the right uh, bunch standard state, uh, uh, guideline from MPOB. And we, uh, in OPA Mill, they only set uh, the perfect or right bunch only because uh, this right bunch produce more oil. So if uh, we or the farmers uh, send to the mill from the field to the mill, uh, all the uh, under quality bunch, uh, the farmers will be penalized for that. Next, and this one is also uh, the quality, uh, the low quality of bunch that uh, the oil pump mill uh, will not accept. Next, this is the process in uh, of oil pump uh, to produce uh, palm oil in the mill. Next, and uh, this is sustainability in palm oil mill process. Lah. We have to uh, they have to uh, 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 comply with the food standard uh, procedure because they they produce uh, oil for food. And next, after the process in uh, oil palm meal, this is the product they they can use. Uh, actually, the main the main product from the uh, oil palm is a uh, crude palm oil and also kernel palm oil with other other product as well. And this one is a uh, the, 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 the use of our uh, palm oil, they can use as a cooking oil, they can produce as fat, uh, use in ice cream, 
cocoa fat substitute, as a margarine, dairy fat substitute, uh, as a vanaspati, which is uh, the substitute for ghee, and also as a source of vitamin next. Also, this one is uh, uh, palm oil facts, which is uh, produced seven times of higher oil production. And um, all in all, uh, industry, uh, open industry only 0.5 from the total area of food of world vegetable oil planting area. And they produce 0.5 carbon emission. And the, the, the lifespan or economic life of oil palm is about 25 years. And next. So in Malaysia, we are very, uh, because oil palm is very important industry for us in Malaysia. So Malaysia palm oil is a sustainable industry due to the development that goes hand in hand with environmental, social and community well-being. And I think that's all for my presentation. So if you have any question. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Azli. So it's the detailed presentation, I think. So we still have five minutes again for this session. So if you have any question or any concern, please raise hand and asking to, yeah, Mr. Uh, Bapak Sopian, please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Mbak Upa. Thanks, Pak uh, Azli Sul, for the great presentation, very detailed, from, yeah, from farm to the processing to end of product. Uh, yeah, I have uh, some question for you. The first, uh, you, you mentioned about the good agricultural practice and how the how to use uh, the good seed to 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 get the high yield or high pl uh, productivity. Uh, in terms of the smallholders farmers, how how the government uh, encourage the smallholders so they 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 must use the good seed for the plantation material that's the first one and then the second one uh, uh, for the replanting or other uh, support from the government uh, uh, what are other support from the government to increase or to improve the, the, the palm oil productivity like uh, uh, sub, uh, is there any subsidy for fertilizer or for the seed or etc and also for uh, uh, for the uh, land conversion. So as as uh, we know that uh, there is a lot of palm oil plantation in Malaysia. How the government deal with the issue of land conversion from especially for the rice field to, to the oil palm plantation or the forest area to the oil palm plantation? How the government uh, addressed it, this issue? I think that's uh, for now uh, for my question. All right. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, let me repeat the question first. So the first question is about how the government uh, encourage uh, the smallholder to buy a seedling from the licensed uh, uh, producer. The second question is about um, uh, some more, uh, is there any um, uh, yeah. subsidy from government about how uh, to encourage uh, uh, the smallholder to replanting, right? And the last one, uh, what our government do uh, in terms of land conversion? Yeah. Okay. So the first question uh, is about uh, how our government uh, control uh, the smallholder or encourage the smallholder to buy the good quality seedling. First of all, uh, for any seed producer or any nursery uh, or palm nursery in Malaysia, to establish the theory, they, they cannot uh, simply establish by their own. They have to go through uh, the, uh, a few regulation or a few steps from our government just to get the license and they have to go through uh, training provided by our MPOP, our uh, OPAM board. Uh, so after that, they can uh, uh, they get, the, get the license and after they get, they get the license, only then they can open the nursery first of all second if there is um, from the for the smallholder or any farmers or palm farmers in malaysia i think because all the nursery in malaysia is licensed by mpob so there is no choice for them to buy from uh, any other suppliers uh, or unlicensed suppliers in malaysia that is uh, the first question and second question 
Is there any uh, any um, from the government for smallholder in, in replanting? Uh, actually, there is a subsidy, uh, but uh, not uh, for all the level of uh, uh, step of the replanting. Uh, the our government uh, maybe they produce a, a, they they provide subsidy on um, uh, the we call it the financial. Uh, they help in in terms of the financial because uh, we already know that. If uh, the smallholder uh, do the replanting, they will not have income for about three years, two to five, two, uh, two, two point five years or three years. So our government will help them in terms of first uh, financial and maybe on certain area, uh, they have a local authority that help them in terms of uh, fertilizer and everything. And then for the third question, um, what is the uh, action of our government in terms of land conversion? Okay. Um, in oil pump industry, in Malaysia pump oil pump industry, this is very uh, very important for us. So all the land that uh, the uh, plan to pump uh, to pump, I mean to plant oil pump, the first must have a certification or land uh, from the land authority. The uh, the only part, the only land that can convert into the oil pump plantation must have a. Uh, we call it as a status just for agriculture. So, so then they can use the land for um, for uh, open planting. For now, there is no regulation uh, if they want to convert from paddy field into oil pump. Uh, whether they cannot use or cannot do or can do that, there is no uh, there is no restriction on that. But if they want to uh, plant oil pump, the status of the land must be agriculture status according to uh, land authority. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, a lot of uh, thing that we can discuss, yeah, uh, Mr. Azlizul, and also for all participants, but we have a short time for this session. And I think, uh, yeah, I just give one uh, chance for the question, session, uh, discussion session. And thank you, Mr. Azlizul, for the interesting presentation and also for all participants that you also always active for the discussion.